Pretty Cubs, what's brewing? Welcome back to the channel. Today we have a recap of Chantel's uh, Hotel Bees, which I've got on many pieces of paper, is scribbled in handwriting that I'm not overly sure I can read. <laughs> I was just going as I was listening because it was so long. It was like four hours something, four and a half hours. I did actually want to download it and cut it down, but I was having trouble with the file. I don't know if it was how it was processed. I don't know. It wasn't restricted, I don't think. Sometimes when she sets it to um, adults only, then I can't download it in some places. Anyway, sometimes the stream just doesn't want to do it. So I wasn't able to download and cut down, hence the notes. So uh, she is in a hotel room. It looks lovely. Full credit where it's due. The hotel looks lovely. I would be happy to stay there. She woke up, she had a bath. Apparently you can text to order room service. Uh, she tries and it doesn't get answered. So she ends up phoning down. Uh, but it's a, it's a nice idea, I suppose. She says maybe we can go to the spa. I think it would have been really nice for her to do that. I'm not sure how long she's due to stay in the hotel because she did mention when someone asked her to show the balcony at night, which she ended up doing after arguing about it the whole stream, um, she did say, oh no, tomorrow night, I promise, initially to try and get out of moving. <laughs> Uh, but I thought she was only staying one night, but maybe I'm wrong. She looks at a menu, she says there's no food on the menu, but she can order snacks. She ends up getting a charcuterie board, which she doesn't end up liking very much. Well, not disliking, but being disappointed in because there's no cheese, which did strike me as a bit odd. It was a lot of like deli meats um, and like prosciutto and things like that. And then some olives, I think. But I would expect there to be like cheese, maybe a little bit of fruit. Like the charcuterie boards I picture are always more varied. So it wasn't that big a deal, but it did also strike me as odd. I think I would have expected it. She holds up. So in some hotels, especially nicer ones, they're like, hey, you can buy this. It's another source of revenue for them. I'm still coughing. I think actually at this point it's an asthma issue rather than the illness issue. But it, it basically screwed my mum. So here we are. But most things, if like if you go to the hotel room and you love it, here's where you can buy it. We'll just sell it directly to you rather than sending you to the manufacturer, which is a decent business going on. But she holds up a bottle of maple syrup and she's like, why? She gets it eventually. But I'm like, because it's it's stereotypically Canadian. Tourists usually go to hotels. It's stereotypically Canadian. That's why. Uh, people are asking a few questions about how much the hotel room was because it is a nice hotel and um, she does tell us that she got a really good price because it was um, St. John Baptiste Day, which is a, a big bank holiday, I think, in, in Canada. I think my Canadian friend at some point did explain this to me and it's, uh, I can't remember, I think it's Victoria Day. There's a holiday that Quebec is like, nah, we're not celebrating English things. And so they celebrate this instead. And it's, it's a really big one and everything's closed. Uh, but because she's like the week after, all the hotel rates are really low, which is, is a good way to do travel. If you're not caught up by a schedule, it's possibly the one sensible thing she did with this. Because I've done the same with um, flights. I was coming back from China once and they had just had the uh, autumn holiday and I was flying the week after and I got such a good rate home. I think I paid 235 pounds for my flight from China to the UK. And it was the best, it was in one of the new, I can't remember which plane it was, but it was in a new plane and I got a really good seat. And it was just such a nice experience. I was like, yes, I have done this right. <laughs> But she does ask, why are you trying to figure out what I spent? And I'm like, because I'm always shocked by the question and she's not really surprised. She knows why, but she's just trying to try and brush things off. But clearly budget has been a huge question with her recently as she talks about borrowing money from her family, which is now confirmed because she said she paid them back. So when she said they were helping me out organizing financially, it did also include cold hard cash. So as you sit there in your five star hotel, or at least she claimed it to be five star, turns out it was four star, still a lovely hotel, doesn't matter. But you know, people are gonna have questions because you were literally talking about how you couldn't afford things and getting payday loans and how you make really irresponsible financial decisions. And throughout most of this stream, she can't give solid reasons as to why she's chosen to do it. 
which is why I fully expected Nando to be there, which he was not, but we will talk a little bit about that in, in a while when Nada, inevitable as the tide, comes up on stream. But I had expected him to be there and he wasn't there from what we saw in the live, so hands up, I was wrong. But there are other reasons then for her to have been there connected to him, which we're talking about. Uh, we'll talk about in a minute. But she mentions that it's quite far from the Sheen, half hour, 45 minutes, something like that. So no chance of accidentally running into each other. And then she stops for a minute and looks quite sad. I'm just like, don't, 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 don't dwell on it to move on. Somebody mentioned that ex Beezer that she got super angry about. And uh, she goes, I'm not acknowledging them while acknowledging them by saying that. And then she goes, I'm very petty. I'll cut you out of my life, which does not surprise me at all. I have a little bit of that in myself, to be honest. Like, I'm fine and I'm fine and I'm fine to a point, but once you get me there, you're gone, you know? <laughs> but uh, the reasoning and how quickly she gets there is a little bit sus to me. There was a funny moment where she tried to dim the lights and then panicked because the room started doing things. <laughs> like, it started bringing down the, uh, the blinds and apparently you press the button and things automatically happen and she just she was like what what's going on it was quite funny again petty to laugh but quite funny so she calls room service and she doxes her room number while she does it and um, this was a thing the whole doxing of a hotel she doxed herself within like minutes because she lay down and the name of the hotel was on the pillow which she could have hidden and chose not to so this kind of comes back to the Nada conversation. I don't know if she remembered he was in court. I think she knew. But um, you get the sense, because usually she she always reveals herself, but she gets angrier at the idea of, of being doxxed. And this, you, she seemed quite open. So after she had docked the hotel, she then called room service and mentioned her room number. And then was like, I'd already told them not to call her. So I don't know if she was hoping he would contact her, maybe he could come up, what, what he could do. But she seemed to be putting the information out there for a reason, you know, because it there was no attempt to hide it, really, really no. At one point at the very beginning of the stream, she was like, oh no, maybe before the stream, maybe in the previous one, because um, she did like an hour one when she just arrived, where she was like saying how tired she was. Uh, where she said, oh, I'll do a room tour, like, I guess as a pre-recorded video, which I would have preferred because I wouldn't have to slog through four and a half hours of this. Um, well, have to. How much do any of us have to do? I suppose that's my choice. Let's take, take um, responsibility for that. Couldn't think of my word there. But it would have saved me some time. But she gives not one, but two room tours on the live. I'd be interested to see if uh, she actually ends up releasing the pre-recorded video as well. But the point I was making before I kind of went off on a tangent was she said when she was going to do the room tour that she'd probably release it after she had left, you know, to keep herself safe because she's clearly learned lessons. She says, <laughs> I was like, who am I going to drunk text tonight to come uh, to this hotel room? I was like, do we really need to ask? She was like, it was need to be someone who can drive. And then she pauses for a second and goes, or cab. <laughs> like, yes, yes. Are you thinking how much the cab rate might be? So unsurprisingly, she's talking a little bit about kind of her feelings during her, let's generously name it, a relationship with Nada. And she reiterates that um, she had been feeling guilty about sleeping with other guys. And then she saw him eating apples with a woman in her lingerie in bed. And why wasn't she getting a piece of, of action? Because if he's going to do this and the usual stuff, the usual stuff. But then she's like, and why was I feeling guilty? Because I'm an empath. <laughs> still with this. Still with this. Um, so this is partially like, I don't think she'd turn him down if he messaged her and said, okay, let, uh, let me meet you. And partly, I, revenge hotel? I don't quite know how to explain this. Um, a few different motivations on her part. One, he might offer, and look, it's a nice hotel. It's not one of the shitholes we went to. It's a nice one. Two, if he doesn't offer, then look what a great time I'm having without you. These are the things I do when you're not weighing me down. And three, look, look at the nice place I'm in. You know, if you contacted me, these are the kind of nice things we could have together. You remember the nice things we have together? There's a lot of motivations, all of which would serve her. 
and uh, I can't remember where it was in the stream because I'm pretty sure I didn't make notes on this, but she talks at one point because of course she's like, uh, oh, I wanted to give him like a weed gift basket thing. She, she had a load of weed products and she wanted to, to give some to him. And it's all just kind of baiting, you know, can't get, uh, get more flies with honey than vinegar that we talked about before. Like this is, we don't know exactly how much contact they've had behind the scenes, but if we take away the chat to chat stuff when they're kind of talking directly to each other, but they're not technically speaking, she's tried to contact him a number of times. And according to him, however reliable that is, he hasn't been answering. And now she's just trying to entice him with things. So it would have been another reason, like when, when you're angry at someone and they do something nice to you, and uh, then you have to say thank you, that well then you're talking to them and we can move past it. It's all a little bit manipulative, but hey, it's Chantel. Uh, but chat is not going with the empath thing at all. They're like, nah, -uh, madam. And she was like, how, okay, then how do I qualify to be an empath? And I'm like, one, it's not a course you take. And if it were a course, she'd probably drop out in the first hour. And two, like, she'd literally have to change everything about her personality. That's how she would qualify to be an empath. Be a different person. She then says, who have I given shit to recently that I haven't regretted it? And in the process of saying that, um, makes herself angry again about like garlic bread and breezy. <laughs> she enrages herself and then starts going off about it as well. And she's like, no, it's all bullshit. It's not, she's right. And I'm like, oh, you see this part of your personality? It's more similar to Nado than it is to an empath. Put it this way. Because of course, she's always right and people are always wrong. Everything is a rule for everyone except for her. And she also says that um, when she says it's all bullshit, she says, I think she's particularly talking about garlic bread here, that he makes shit up about me. Now, I watch garlic bread because his recaps in certain things are quite short. It's very accessible, I suppose, if you're trying to do a quick catch up. And... Um, I, I can't think of something he said that has been, when I say original to him, I don't, I don't mean that as the insult of, oh, he's so derogative, but I mean, we're reactors, the clue is in the name, we react to something she has said, so I don't think there's been any information he's interacted with that she hasn't provided, so to say he's lying, we we don't really have lies or truth when it comes to that. I mean, I suppose you can say, oh, she contacted me when she didn't or what have you. But in terms of, of what she puts out, there's only really discussion. And okay, your opinion might end up being wrong. For example, I thought Nadja was gonna be at the hotel because history has taught me that's how it usually goes. But she is not reliable. And therefore, sometimes the assumptions we make aren't right because we're trying to apply logic to a fundamentally illogical person. So are they right all the time? Maybe not, but are they lying? And they, Breezy, call it bread, whoever she's angry at in this minute. I don't think lie is the correct word to apply to the situation. There's only interpretation and sometimes we're wrong. But you know, she doesn't differentiate at all because her emotions get in the way. And that's why one reactor is every reactor. We're all one massive group with no differences because that's just how she prefers to see us all. So she chats for a while. I'm not covering most of the Nada talk, but I'll just pick out a few points because most of it we've heard before. But in her general, why do I want to be with him so badly? He's, he's terrible to me. An example she gives is, um, she says she'll send Nada a message. I'm assuming she means on stream so she could see it here. And she'll see him screenshot it to use against her. And I'm just sitting there like, if you don't want people to cause you trouble, stop doing things that'll get you into trouble. If, if the screenshot he can use against her is either proof of communication or proof that she's sending him money, which are the two things that really give him any power there, She's claiming she's not doing it. So if you weren't lying about it, there'd be no trouble he could give. What would it matter if he released the screenshot? Because everything would be truth and you'd already have admitted to it. So if, if you'd want to stop getting in trouble, stop lying. So the door goes, her drink arrives, because when she called um, 
rude service to get the, the board. She also ordered a martini. Um, her food still being prepared, but the guy was very kind and brought up the drink first so that if she was waiting, she'd have something. So conveniently, Jose apparently messaged her during that moment when she was off screen and um, can meet her at two or three. At one point, she, she's like, oh, you, you always call me like, maybe when she was talking about reactors. I'm trying to keep this in logical order, but sometimes I forget things I didn't bother writing down. You know, she, you always think I'm the liar. And I'm like, well, this, because she was like, oh, you know, you're going to see that this guy is real. You're going to see that this guy is real. So in the three seconds she was off camera, apparently Jose texts and apparently he's coming over at two or three. Spoiler alert, this doesn't happen despite the, the high energy tone of you're going to see later on. So at one point she mentions that Nada is live. From everything I can tell, he seems nervous about his court date in the morning. Um, but that proves that he's not actually somewhere else in Montreal or the hotel. Um, and she says that she can't watch Nada because he just complains. <laughs> Madam, really? That's what we're going for when we call Nada unwatchable. It's for this reason. <laughs> the mirror we discussed. <laughs> so her charcuterie board finally arrives. There's no cheese. Um, which, like I said, seems weird, but she's going to be bitter about it for the next three-ish hours. Uh, she eats, she says she has a lot on her mind, and then because she has a chance to think more than a second, she's like, now I hate Montreal, it brings back bad memories. I'm like, well, there are other cities in Canada. She has a lot of places she could have gone, she chose Montreal. Like, you're, you are in control of this. I was going to say Toronto, and then I was like, oh no. Toronto were the good times. That would be even worse. Surely there's more than two cities she could be visiting right now. Canada's a big place. This is where she confirms that she paid everybody back. I want to know, just because I'm being nosy, I realise and recognise that it's not really any of my business. Given how much she makes, I wonder how much she borrowed from her family. Like she had to get through like the last two weeks, right? And if she's borrowing from a family, she doesn't have the credit to cover it. So her credit cards are either maxed or near maxed. Think about her family. And she approaches them and says, hey, can you lend me this money? Now, from what I've heard, I don't know if this is actually confirmed or not, her stepfather is decently well off, but her mum works as like a nurse, I think, if that's correct. I think that's correct. Can you imagine someone who comes in, works really hard for their money, like, is maybe a bit more sensible with it than Chantal is. And your daughter, who makes thousands and thousands a month, comes and says, yeah, I need to borrow some money. I, I wonder, I wonder how much you'd be willing to lend her. And then how much would she ask for? How much would she have the audacity to ask for? Because it's already a fairly audacious thing to go and ask in the first place. But if I were lending money, which I, I generally don't do. I really don't like how it makes me feel. Now I recognize not everyone is in a, as privileged a situation as either myself or Foodie. So I'm not kicking anyone who might need to borrow money, but Foodie didn't need to, it was pure wastage on her part, you know? But in that situation, I would want the bare minimum to get me through, but I don't think Chantelle has the control for bare minimum when necessary. Certainly not anymore. I know she used to earn less, so she must have at some point, um, I was going to say at some point lived within her means, but she had a bankruptcy and she has credit card debt. So I'm, I'm assuming actually she didn't. I, how much would it have taken to get her through that last week? Like I said, not really any of my business, but it's an interesting question. Anyway, she's paid them back, which is good. She then gets another message from the guy who she's been kind of talking up as, oh, he's going to come visit, he's going to come see us, whatever. And then she's suddenly like, well, I'm not sure if I'm comfortable. And she, she has been messaging this guy, apparently. Like, when we talk about her suddenly ghosting people, he's willing to come to her hotel at like 2 or 3 a.m. And now she's not sure she wants to meet. <laughs> Very different energy than we were having a little bit earlier. Someone actually suggests, well, okay, why don't you meet him for a drink downstairs in the bar? Because she'd been talking about going to the bar. And remember, we were like, oh, that might end in tears. But it, it's a good compromise. So if he comes to see you and it's, it's, it's that early and at least you could 
chat with him, decide, well not even decide, but consider if doing more is something you want to do. Like it takes the pressure off if he's not physically in your room. But um, she, she didn't seem uh, okay with that. And someone tells her she's too insecure to meet somebody. So then she decides she can still enjoy the room herself. So, you know, rip the guy she's been texting. I hope at the very least he has the um, understanding to not text her again, because if I got messed around the way she messes guys around or allegedly messes guys around, I would have no patience for that. My God. She says she feels at peace in the room, just like in Windsor when she was trying to get away from everything and then she went by herself. Um, her instinct is always to run away and ignore things and she can do that more easily in a new environment so i'm betting she feels better here uh she says she knows she's a mess and fat and gross and then she starts crying a little i can't tell if it's like real tears it's more noise than tears so how genuine it is i'm not sure <laughs> but uh she's saying i deserve someone who isn't gonna hurt me and I'd be more sympathetic to it if she weren't like entirely in control of the fact that she's still in this, you know? Like, she's currently talking, allegedly, to like five different guys. She has a lot of other options she could follow up with. And as we've just seen, she is blowing them off for this dream of Nada. And I just, who she doesn't even want half of the time. And I just... It's making it really hard to be sympathetic when she starts crying. I deserve better. I think everyone deserves better than Nada, but at the same time, don't expect me to start coddling you about it because Jesus Christ, we've been doing this a while. She says, and I do totally believe this, she's like, it just hurts to never get closure or to, for him to never say sorry. Yeah, and he never, ever, ever will because that's his power because he knows how much it gets to her. And so long as he doesn't, she'll just keep going and keep going thinking she's gonna get it and she won't she does at least acknowledge she actually does this was one of those conversations when you see how self-aware she is and you realize exactly how much of this is just a choice she knows exactly where she is and she just doesn't want to put the effort into changing it and so here she says it feels like i'm going crazy but i know i don't have to put myself through this and you're like yep that that would be the first thing she does at, at one point just go, why would you want to purposely hurt me? What did I ever do? And I out loud said, are you fucking kidding to my computer? Are you fucking kidding? You doxed him, you text him constantly, you blow up online constantly, you tell all the details of your life, you're cool, you reported him to the police, you drove to his house and waited outside in the wee hours of the night. Those are just things off the top of my head. There's, uh, there's more, I'm sure. Jesus Christ, what did I ever do? Are you kidding me? Not to say that anybody deserves an abusive relationship, but they're equally toxic. We have a little merry-go-round of most of the same shit about Nada. We've got two hours to go. I'm not going to waste time going through all the nitty-gritty of it. Um, she says, I won't get over him without therapy. Again, self-aware, but ain't doing shit about it. So there we go. She has a little bit of conversation about her dad because uh, her chat are asking some questions. Does your dad, her relationship with her dad, affect relationships with men? And she gets angry really quickly. Like someone hit a nerve intentionally or otherwise. She says he has two other kids that he gives attention, but uh, she, he doesn't even think of me. So that's clearly a sore spot and I wasn't really expecting such an emotional response to it uh, because we've heard a little bit about her dad before, the fact that he's an alcoholic, she makes him sound like a little bit of a deadbeat. He apparently wasn't around much when she was little, but someone in the chat made the excellent point, and this is again when I talk about not really having sympathy, I have understanding, but I don't have sympathy for this reason, which is it's not your fault, but it is your responsibility to heal. Like she has every opportunity to work through these things. And I'm not saying it would be easy, but I'm saying she has the opportunity to do the work that she doesn't take. And she says, I know I need therapy. And I'm like, well, <laughs> you know it, but what are you doing? And again, she says, I can stay stuck or move on, but she never does move on. So what's the point of that realization? She has these realizations, these nights of realizations constantly we could go back to the very beginning of my channel when the conversation instead of nada was food and diet and how 
the way she lived was killing her. Exactly the same conversation, but about food. She never does anything about it. Um, she does say she feels like she's between families. Um, like they didn't fuck up with her sister. And I was like, ooh, that sounds like a therapy conversation right there. Um, they had me young and didn't know what they were doing. And then, bizarrely, uh, veers into that's why believing in God is so nice. And I was like, what? So the thing with how she talks about God. Now, I'm not entirely sure how to respond to this as a thought. So I'm, I went to a Roman Catholic primary school when I was a kid, but we went because it was a school that fed into a really good uh, secondary school in the area. So that's why we were put in, but I don't have any religious affiliations and I don't want to offend people who do with this conversation. Yeah, anyone gets to believe in any religion they want. But I find, particularly like in relation to her and how she speaks of it, that often she mentions God in these moments only as a kind of way when, you know, she wants unconditional love no matter how she acts. And I think she sees that in religion, no matter what she does. If you believe in God, then you, you have that in some way. She pictures it in some way as an entity that has to love you. And that's the kind of relationship that she's been trying to place on people in her life for a long time now, you know? And I don't want to shit talk that because I could see that being a really important thing to a lot of people. But like I said, fundamentally, I have no religious beliefs. I have no affiliations with any particular church or belief system. So it's one that I just don't connect to as a as an idea. So I'm not going to say too much about it just because I don't I don't exactly know how to pass it. But the fact that it only comes up really in these moments, I think, tells me she doesn't so much want God as she wants people around her to have that relationship. And again, that's a therapy issue, I think. There's a quick mention of Eschan. She says he's harmless and she knows a serial killer when she sees one. And I have some questions about that. I feel like a lot of the time the reason serial killers are able to become serial is because people don't suspect them for a long time. But there we go. She makes a point that I'm always going to worry that men only like me for my money. How will I know? And this is actually a very serious point because if you look at things that each party in a relationship bring to the table, she relies really heavily on money to do the heavy lifting. And the answer to that is, well, then don't do that. You know, it's don't tell people about your money and don't use it to control relationships the way you do. But she won't stop doing that because she considers it one of her best assets. So it's the thing that gets her into the position of being able to choose a guy a lot of the time and it's the thing that keep in the case of nada let's say i can't speak for for pete's or bb but recently it's been the thing that's kept the relationship going so i think she's a little bit scared of what she might realize if she didn't have money in the picture which to me would say well maybe be a bit more careful about your source of income and the way you um disregard it and its rules frequently yeah like be a bit more careful with where your money's coming from if you depend on it so much but that that's uh, not a consideration for her generally she does say this is the adult arc it will never happen i don't think she'll ever change i think she is who she is in that regard but god i want it to happen does she even realize how many views she would get and like not even if we even discount the number of views, although she has admitted before when she's gone on health journeys, she gets equal views to mukbangs. Remember when, when that was the argument, well, mukbangs give her more views. If she were truly successful in even any one of the areas, if she really started going to therapy and working on, on herself, or if she really started budgeting and like doing the thing and, and getting like a debt-free journey and getting her taxes under control, any one of the issues in her life that make up Chantel, if she were to purposefully work on it, people would watch. And I really, really wish she would just do one of them to see that she could. 
but on the, in the same um, sentence, I, I don't think she can. I, I think what we see is what we're going to get with her. I don't think she'll ever take the responsibility to do that. But God, I would love to see it. I'd be here. I'd be interested. I'd be following. She does the second hotel tour. Again, I don't know if that means we're going to get a video. And then she makes noodles. Uh, she explains that you can buy everything in the room. We won't go into that again. But I do think it's kind of a bad idea because she has no impulse control. So they've put all the snacks on a shelf so that she can just help herself and then get billed later. She seemed a little bit confused about how billing works for like room service and stuff. You've stayed in a lot of hotels now. They charge you at the end. You must know this. There's a fair amount of talk about prison, which has come up recently because it's all part of a tax evasion arc. And she had this um, talk recently, and I think I mentioned it in my last recap react. Um, that she was like, well, if I need to go to prison for a few months, I'll go to prison, you know? And I think she's seeing prison here. I don't actually know if Canadians get sent to prison or not. Someone in my comments said they don't. I think in the UK they do. In America, you can, because Al Capone got put away for tax evasion, if I remember. Anyway, so I don't know if prison is even an option in the Canadian system for taxes. But the more she talks about it, the more I feel like she sees it as this, this, I was about to say get out of jail free card, it's the opposite of that. But as an avoidance of actually doing the work to pay the taxes, oh well, I went to prison for a few months, it's all done now. This is the shortcut. Prison is the shortcut. And I'm like, maybe instead of just settling into that as an inevitability, you look at that as a reality, stop joking about it and just do something but apparently that's not where we are in this the adult arc she said if she ever went to prison she would get her mum to send uh commissary she'd have like the, the best foods she actually initially said mum and grandma and then remembered that grandma wasn't an option and it was a bit of a sad moment prison as an idea is is coming up more and more on her mind right now it's a joke but <laughs> she brought a picture this was quite sweet, if slightly awkward if she had hooked up or done OnlyFans content, because yuck, but, but quite a sweet thing in this moment. She brought a picture of her grams to the hotel room to put on the nightstand, and I was like, oh, that's actually very nice. Um, she said she would have been a prison boss. God, she would have been someone's bitch in like three minutes. <laughs> three minutes if she didn't get herself beaten up and killed first. <laughs> You've seen her talk big and then get on the phone and be like, no, I've got nothing to say. I, she'd be a prison boss, my ass. She says, I have nothing to hide from you guys except when I'm back with Nadra. And I'm like, yep. <laughs> and a comment says, well, sometimes you're self-aware. Too bad you don't do anything. And that was the whole argument from before. Yeah. Realization only takes you so far. If you're not willing to take action, what's the point? And she says, Quite honestly, well, I think because thinking and talking are easier than actions. Yep, yes they are, but thinking and talking also do less for you than actions. So there we go. It's proportionate. She says one mildly concerning thing. She was like, every time I drink, I'm assuming this means drink alcohol. Think for a moment how much alcohol she's been slamming just recently. Every time I drink, I need to eat for like 10 years to feel better because she's getting nausea. And I'm like, that's alarming, what's going on there? Whether it's your liver just rebelling, whether it's your stomach not being able to take it, whether it's anything in between, like, go to a doctor, man, that ain't right. I think she doesn't want to because the obvious answer would be, yeah, could we just not drink alcohol for a while and maybe just cut the weed while we figure out what this is so we can get clear readings? And she's not willing to take that as an option, I'm guessing, so. No way is she going to go to the doctor about it, but yeah, that's concerning. She says, a little bit bizarrely, the only way things will change is when I go to Africa, otherwise the hotel visas are boring. I, I, got, I got a few questions about that. Number one, why are you wasting the money then? If you know it's going to be boring, if you've already spent your hotel tour before you've done the pre-recorded video, if you've got nothing really to say or to present, and every time she asks people, okay, what do you want to do tomorrow? She um, cuts anything that's to do with uh, exercise. So go to the top of Mount Royal. No, absolutely not. She's kind of playing the botanical gardens again. 
but she's already done that you know there are other museums but how far can she go uh, is a whole nother question so it's a confusing them well if you know that why are you doing it now and um, when when was Africa decided I know she talked about going to Egypt is we still on that is the aim Egypt I know Egypt is on the continent I am aware but it seemed odd that she would say Africa instead of Egypt. Does she mean somewhere else in Africa? Because way back in the way back machine, when she was with Bibi, she was like, I'd like to visit Africa. And uh, I just, it was odd. She, the way she was speaking about it was like it was already decided. And I know she goes like, oh, Eurobees a lot of the time. But it, it was a different kind of tone to the sentence. And I was like, what? And then my third question was, why would you sitting in a hotel in Africa be any more interesting than this? It's the environment the hotel is in that makes a vlog like that interesting. And if you're not willing to interact with that in Canada, why would you be more willing to do it in the middle of Africa? I, I don't know. I don't know what she thinks she's going to achieve. Uh, turns back to her being angry at Gorlet Bread, says he lies, doesn't mention about what again. So there we go. Um, and again, there's, there's nothing for us to lie about. We're just reacting. I don't know quite how the conversation got here, but she says she wants to be a sex worker. She just doesn't have the courage. She has an OnlyFans. She said she was going to do content with the guy who's definitely coming tomorrow. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Someone says she makes six figures. She goes, I don't make six figures. And then realizes, and she's like, do I make six figures? How am I poor? What's wrong with me? She does make six figures because to make 120,000, a very simple uh, sum of like, Hey, 12 times 10, 120,000. Yeah, 10 is the lower end. She admits in the stream she makes more than 10. So I'm just like, seriously? Seriously, you haven't realized? Seriously, apparently it was a lifelong dream, but she didn't realize. Um, and then she's like, oh, uh, you people make me feel like, oh no, before that she was like, oh, I eat myself broke ass. Any addiction makes you broke. Men, weed, food. She's got all of them, all of them. But she's choosing to throw money away on them. She could choose not to, she's not doing that. Then she says, you people make me feel bad about how I spend money. And then luckily immediately says, yeah, but you're right. <laughs> like she makes terrible decisions. Like she does know that she's bad with money, but much like she knows she needs therapy, what are you planning on doing about it, you know? Speaking of terrible financial decisions, she asked someone to keep track of her snack costs. How the hell are we gonna know? <laughs> <laughs> and why would you ask your chat to do that? Go get a piece of paper from the notepad that is sure to be in either the desk or the drawer. Write it down. Why are you depending on your chat to know these numbers? And then in a moment of financial cunning, she says, I'm going to complain about the charcuterie board and they got all these snacks for free. Smart, eh? And I was like, less smart, more trashy, really. But there we go. I think that's the last of my notes. She did talk for a while longer, um, but nothing particularly of interest, just the general interaction with the chat. She goes, lies down and nothing particularly big as far as I remember. So I'm gonna leave you there, but that was the Hotel Bees. We'll see where she ends up tomorrow and how things go. So thank you for being here. I always forget to say, but like, subscribe, YouTube. Do the things down below. There are YouTube things. Please do them. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.